The New York Mets have done it again. This team is truly the most entertaining team in sports. I mean that with full sincerity. There is no team that is more entertaining than the Mets. If there is a picture that can, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. If there's a picture that can define the Mets season in just one word, I guess, or one picture that is, it would be the picture of the last out from tonight. I don't know if the picture exists. I hope to find it. But the picture from the last out tonight of Marte, and Bader colliding as they catch the final out. And then the look, the stare that Marte gives Bader with what was the tying run at the plate. Just if that ball would have fallen because two outfielders collided, that would be the only thing that would have been more Mets than everything that happened prior to that in the game. But it didn't. The Mets put it away. And I said it last night. I'll say it again. The Mets play the most entertaining brand of baseball. Bar none. There is no team that is more entertaining than the Mets. Every single time, and I talked about the game last night, three outs. They lead by four runs. Let's see how they try and figure it out, how they try and mess it up. Tonight, they gave up only one run, but it got hairy at the end. This is the first time in almost a month that the Mets have won a game by more than one run. I think I saw that, something like that. So uh, fun times for the Mets. They also, of course, they, they couldn't make it easy in the end, it was just another case where you're sweating it out, where the tying runs at the plate, where there's a full pitch and Gary and I think it was Keith tonight on the broadcast. Just they're so funny. Just the way they're like, oh, boy. All right, here we go. And their reactions to everything is just so perfect. So Mets. I love the Mets. Don't ever change. It's funny. The Yankees are almost boring. They won their sixth consecutive game. And I just wanted to read this stat because one guy who's not boring is Luis Hill. Luis Hill has seven consecutive outings with six plus innings and one or zero runs allowed. So that's seven consecutive starts of six plus innings with one or zero runs allowed. That is the longest streak in New York Yankees history. This isn't the Minnesota Twins. This isn't the Seattle Mariners or Washington Nationals or Texas Rangers. The Yankees have been around for 150 fucking years. And this dude is doing things that no pitcher in franchise history has ever done. When you look out and you see Aaron Judge and what he's doing in center and what Juan Soto is doing in right and what this dude is doing on the mound. And then you remember Glaber Torres hasn't even shown up yet. He's been awful. It's a home run tonight. I actually had that coming. I had him on my bench at fantasy and placed him into the lineup. I was like, I'm feeling Glaber tonight. Hit a home run for me. Thank you, Glaber. When you have Garrett Cole, who made his rehab start tonight uh, in double A. And by the way, this is just an interesting, weird Rami thing. So I was thinking about going to this game. I couldn't go anyway, but I was thinking about going to New Jersey to see the Somerset Patriots, to see Garrett Cole and the Miners. And to see Jason Dominguez, Spencer Jones is there as well. And then before the game, they announced that Jason Dominguez is actually getting called up to AAA. So Jason Dominguez is no longer in Somerset as Garrett Cole arrives. And I was like, couldn't they just leave Dominguez there for one more day? Would it really have mattered if they left Dominguez in the minors or in AA for one more game? So that fans who are going to see Garrett Cole could go see Cole and Dominguez for 14 bucks. Because God knows it's going to be more expensive than that to go see the Yankees this summer. The Yankees are going to be a hot ticket. Not for me. I could. I usually go for free. Sorry. I don't know. It's just, I don't know why I said that. Um, but yeah, I usually go to Yankee Stadium for free. And if I can't get in for free, then I usually don't go. That's just, I, that's just where I am at my point in my career. I have no money, but great access. So, and we'll talk about my career in a second. I do want to talk about that. Um, if you follow me online, you know uh, where that's going. But the Yankees, I mean, the historics from Aaron Judge, the historics from Juan Soto, and now Luis Hill being the best pitcher. The bullpen has been in shambles. Like it hasn't even been like at its peak health. I know they've been really good, but we haven't seen the bullpen at peak health. You still never feel like you're a thousand percent certain at the end of the in at the end of the game with um with Clay Holmes out there. And yet still this team is incredible. And oh by the way, Giancarlo Stanton, he might be the most entertaining one to watch. He hits homers like no one hits homers. When Giancarlo hits them, nobody else hits them like that. That big looping, it just kind of landed in the second. It looked so easy for Stanton on that home run. This team is special, I'm telling you. And yet, they're boring compared to the New York Mets. The New York Yankees, who have won six in a row, 43 and 19 now, are boring compared to the New York Mets. Sure, Sunday was fun, that big comeback win. 
But the Mets, win or lose, they make it exciting. They make it interesting. And by the way, don't look now. They've won four of their last six. Just saying. They're only three games out of a wild card spot. The Mets aren't as bad as you think. And they're the most entertaining team in baseball. I hope everyone's really geared up and excited to talk um, New York Mets baseball for the next few weeks, to talk New York Yankees baseball for the next few weeks, because guess what? This is it. I'll do an NBA Finals preview tomorrow uh, because I am really actually interested in the NBA Finals. I think it's going to be a great series. I'm going to watch a lot of the NHL Finals, I think, too. Or not a lot. I'll watch some of it because I do think that um, Connor McDavid is that entertaining. And I'd like to see if Florida can slow him down. If Florida can slow down Connor McDavid, I'd actually feel a little bit better about the Rangers. Although I think the Rangers are better than Edmonton. They don't have a player of the caliber of McDavid, but you could let McDavid beat you and still beat Edmonton because they're pretty much McDavid and ah, not a whole lot else. Anyway, that's that. That's hockey, but that's going to end soon. The NBA, I think, is going to be a great series. I'll do my full NBA finals preview tomorrow, but then, dude, it's baseball. It's hardcore baseball season. Mets, Yankees, Mets, Yankees, whatever the story is. By the way, the Yankees need to keep winning. I know the record looks great, but what are they? One game up in the loss column on Baltimore? Baltimore's right on their ass. Baltimore's that good. So um, it's going to be a lot of baseball talk uh, over the course of the next few months. Obviously, we could throw in some Jets and Giants as that gets closer. It's being it's a big deal today that Hassan Reddick is not at Jets training camp. And to me, it's a non-story. To me... And I don't know, I know media, the media's job is to create stories, but it's frustrating to me that specifically it feels like the Jets beat reporters take stories that shouldn't be stories and make them more negative than they have to be. Even if it is a story and it's not a fabricated story, they somehow portray it in a more negative way because it's the Jets. And I do the same thing because emotionally I know the Jets are broken and the Jets whatever can go wrong will go wrong. So when I see that Hassan Reddick's not there, when I see that Aaron Rodgers has a blister, all of a sudden I'm thinking the worst possible case scenario. But the reality is when you think logically, that shouldn't be the case. So I'm not happy with how it's being reported that Hassan Reddick's not there. I mean, Micah Parsons is in that freaking training camp and or OTAs, voluntary workouts, and people aren't freaking out over there. So you know, it goes both ways because then I'm also enjoying the hell out of some of these Rogers throws when he's wearing no pads. There's no rush. And it's again, OTAs also it's meaningless. So how can I enjoy the Aaron Rodgers throws, but also say that Hassan Reddick not being there doesn't mean anything. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm only human. I can have it both ways. Sorry. <laughs> That's how we have it as sports fans. And especially as a Jeff fan, I don't get it to enjoy a lot. So I might as well enjoy this time. I talked about that last night, like enjoy the actual parts that you can enjoy because God knows it leads to disappointment in the end. So I'm going to try and enjoy this part as a jet fan. Um, so that's, I, I saw a funny meme. I was like, get ready to learn nerfies. It was one of these gambling guys put it out there. I don't like to promote the gambling guys because I don't believe in their business model necessarily. I keep reaching for more self there. Some of them are flat. Sorry. So if you're like if my audio is in and out, this one's actually pretty good. Anyway, the point is that, I don't like to promote a lot of these gambling people because I think they're liars. Most of them, like they're not a better gambler than you, but the guy wrote, Hey, get ready to learn nerfies. I thought it was a funny, uh, funny tweet, uh, because there's no NBA and NHL for like five days in a row. And I put together such a bomb nerfy tonight. So I had Chicago against Chicago, no runs first inning. I had Boston and, uh, and Atlanta, no runs first inning. By the way, Boston had a tribute video for Chris sale. My God, the dude is, uh, like he, <laughs> You gave him millions and millions of dollars to never pitch for you, literally ever. Now you're also giving him a tribute. Wasn't the money enough? I don't know. Um, and then there was also one last. Oh, Baltimore and uh, and and Toronto, which was a risky one because there ended up being like 11 runs scored in that game. So nailed all of them. Big nerfy guy. Got the whole nerfy trio. It was like a plus 600 bet. Uh, and I hit that. So, uh, yeah that last to me and we'll see what happens i'm gonna wait maybe hold off use that money thursday and gamble on the nba finals because i'm going to watch it so tomorrow tomorrow night nba finals preview that's going to be fun but we'll keep talking about the mets and the yankees throughout the summer now one of the things about talking mets and the yankees and we'll talk about other things i know there's the big caitlin clark story and I, I don't know if i need to talk about it i feel like it's cheap clicks to talk about it everyone's talking about it so maybe i should be talking about it right get my cheap views i mean they're just like get the views just the same and it's worth it um 
I'm trying to navigate my career in an interesting way because I don't want to be that guy who's headline grabbing. I also have learned a ton from Spike Eskin and other people at WFAN, which is have definitive, definitive opinions, have statements. That's the business we're in. We're not here to just say, eh, we're here to give opinions and statements. And so when last night I say the Rangers core is rotten and then people on TikTok are saying, you think it's rotten? That's a little bit of an overstatement or you're not giving Florida enough credit because you think the Rangers folded. Yeah, no, okay. Those things can also be true that, yeah, if you, a slight tweak to the Rangers core and all of a sudden it's great or, you know, Florida uh, was also really good in the series and you have to give them credit. But if I say that, then my it kind of weakens my opinion about the Rangers and my opinion about the Rangers still stands. So I'm not... It's it's a navigation. I don't want to be clickbaity. I don't want to say things that I don't believe in. I say everything that I believe in, but I say it as strong and as as strongly as I possibly can say it. I hope that's clear. And it's one of the many things I learned in the last year. Is now I, I posted this today, but it really was uh, last week. I was reminiscing. It's uh, been a full year, my first full year at WFAN, and I have to say, there's never been a time in my life that I have felt that I love going to work every single time I'm there and I love every bit of it. And there are some frustrating things that it's all jobs. And there are some things that can sometimes feel like a drag. And there's some times that I'm there at six o'clock in the morning after having worked till 8 PM there the night before or work till midnight there the night before. And then I sleep on the couch and get up for a six o'clock in the morning shift. I will, I've, committed more in the last year, committed myself more in the last year to WFN than any other job I've had in my life. I've really put myself, I almost never say no to a shift. And it's and it's been wonderful for me. It's given me everything I've ever wanted in return. The people I work with are incredibly talented. The shows I get to work on, I mean, I get to work with like on the shows that I grew up listening to, having worked with Boomer, having worked with Greg, having worked with Evan Roberts and Tiki Barber, and obviously Sal and BT and everyone, Keith and Chris, every single person, Tom, Everyone I've gotten to work with there has not only been just incredible for me as somebody who grew up listening to the station and still has like a childlike feeling towards the radio station, uh, but also as someone who is trying to create my own path in this industry, seeing how they go about their work, seeing the talent and watching them and seeing how talented they are and seeing how they view and, and, and dissect and talk about things has been such an incredible learning experience. And I really, I, can't possibly thank Spike Eskin enough, who I know is not there anymore. But just I need to thank him because he's the one who brought me there. He's the one who gave me every opportunity. And then the way he moved me along and ultimately put me on air. Um, I, I'm so in incredibly grateful. I hope to be on air again soon. I've done it twice. I hope to do it more times. But until then, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep talking on here because that's the best way I know how to get better. That's the best way I know how to improve every day. And it's what I've learned from those people and everyone I work with. And it's the grind every single day. So if the opportunity is not in front of you right now, create that opportunity. And that's what I've learned from so many people, whether it's uh, Emmanuel Bavari, who helped me so much when I first got there and now to see him, he's the freaking voice of the New York Yankees. Of course, along with Justin, who was somebody who I was friendly with even before I got to WFAN. And I've had so many people like that, him, Pat Boyle, Tommy Lugauer, who are guys who I was friendly with online or Connor Green friendly with online that I didn't even know personally before I got to WFAN. And now actually, you know, continuing that relationship and them helping me with my career and being invested in me and in my career has been so amazing to watch. And I think, you know, in an industry that's so competitive, what's so cool about that place is that I think we all try and, you know, pick each other up and build each other up as much as possible as well. And that's, I don't think that's common in every place. And I think that's something that's special about WFAN. Um, you know, Sal has been someone like that for me. Keith, obviously everyone knows has done a ton for me in my career. So um, it's just super cool and I'm super grateful. So a little soapy moment for me here, just talking about just reflecting as the last year. And and some days are tough because this industry where you're not sure when you're the guy who brought you in and was your boss um, and really helped you along leaves one day and then you're stuck, feel like you're starting over and you have to learn someone new and you're kind of unsure where your place is. Or, you know, you're not getting the hours you want or, you know, even when you are and everything's going great, the money's still not great. And you're still trying to figure out what do I do on the side? How much do I devote to this, my career and my passion when I need to devote something to trying to make some sort of money so that I can balance that and actually fund my career? Um, you know, there's so many things that I've had to think about and worry about throughout this time. And yet every time I'm in the building and every time I'm doing 
what I love, which is being there in any capacity, whether it's working digital, um, whether it's working on any show, whether it's working on the weekend or obviously hosting a show, every time it reaffirms for me that I'm in the right place and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's just about finding and navigating your way. And everyone who listens to this and helps me, supports me that way has also been super cool. Um, and so many people in the industry, I think it's so cool that I meet so many people, whether they work for Yes or the New York Post or Believe, which is the network that I obviously do the podcast for, or the number of different places um, that I've gotten to meet and gotten to know and made friends of people in the industry. John Boy, obviously. The one cool thing is that everyone's pulling for each other. Everyone's rooting for each other. And we all kind of support each other. And it's such a cool close knit industry. And that's, that's awesome. Um, and it needs to be that way because otherwise we'd quit. We couldn't do this on our own. So I appreciate everyone for supporting me. So a little bit of a soapy end to the episode. Let's go Mets and Yankees. It's going to be a fun summer. I hope the Mets are going to continue to entertain us. Hopefully the Yankees keep winning as well. Um, until next time, buy the hats, go to hugahouse.com. Use the code below Brian Bumgarner wearing the hats. Who else did I see wearing the hats? There was some other actor. Oh, Shane Gillis. I mentioned, um obviously we have aaron Rodgers, and there was another athlete wearing the hat that looks too oh shohei otani wearing a huga house hat my favorite gambler i mean athlete of all time wearing a huga house hat you can wear one too and look cool doing it use my code rami rami 15 percent off your first order i appreciate everyone who buys it every time i post it someone buys so uh, i don't know if it's the same person every time but i appreciate that too so till next time like subscribe share the podcast share it share it share it share it keep supporting me i just talked about how much I appreciate the support. You should keep supporting me. Don't you want to support me? Till next time, I'll see you all uh, again. Like I said, I appreciate everything that you've done and continue to do. See ya.